Yeah, Eric is Eric is such an interesting guy. That's why I wanted to ask you because a lot of folks know him just from his on air persona in WCW. They don't know about his, his shoot background. Right. Eric and I go back. I mean, one of the reasons I got into wrestling is obviously because of uh, my association with Eric Bischoff. But, but you know, we were friends in our early 20s. You know, when you were in your early 20s, you, you guys remember what it was like. You know, there's only, we're always sniffing and, and you're just like a young buck, right? You, you want to be out there, test yourself and go out and see, um, um, I, I don't need to tell you what, what the King of Connecticut is like with the ladies, but that's what we're doing. We're, we're just chasing ladies all the time. And, you know, whether we were fighting or we're chasing ladies, that, those are the two things that we did in our, our early 20s. And, you know, uh, Eric, uh, he, was an, he was an amateur wrestling collegiate wrestler as well. He blew out his knee and, and uh, that's how he got into uh, uh, martial art up in Minneapolis. Um, and that's how we met, uh, training at the, at the karate school. And, and uh, we both, you know, got into uh, kickboxing, which was uh, way before its time. If you look it up, uh, PK, Professional Karate Association, um, Don Klein and Joe Corley. And, and uh, you know, I fought at the Bantamweight class. Um, I was fortunate enough to be, you know, ranked number one from, you know, seven, this goes way back now, 75 to about 80. Um, and, and uh, got to fight some of the, some of the toughest guys. And, and uh, you know, it was fun. But what was for Eric and I was that we would get in the car. We didn't have a lot of money. So we would, we would get in the van or a car and drive. He would drive down from Minneapolis to Iowa, and we'd get in our van and go to Wisconsin, Chicago, uh, North and South Carolina. We loved, we loved that tobacco road, you know, because there were so many college down there with all the ladies. And, and uh, um, we would go down to Florida for U.S. Open and, and uh, of course, Battle of Atlanta and Georgia. And, and, and we would just travel, go to a karate tournament. And once we got ranked, you know, the, the, the promoter will fly us to like Long Beach, it, you know, Ed Parker Nationals and, 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 you know, a lot of those bigger tournaments. But that's what we did. You know, it's, it, it was a way for us to get out there and actually fight somebody, not end up in jail. Uh, uh, certainly, you know, I won the Canadian National Championship twice um, mm. up in Canada and Toronto. And, and, uh, uh, just to give a plug to Jack, and you know, I, I didn't I didn't get in trouble, so I didn't I didn't end up meeting you up there. So that was a good thing. And and those are the things we did, and that's how we became such a close friend. And when the opportunity came along, the fact that Eric knew that I I, I was born in Japan uh, and speak Japanese, and so that's how I got into wrestling business. You know. Yeah, you know, a lot of people don't realize this. Uh, that Eric Bischoff, uh, the way that he originally knew Vern Gagne was through amateur wrestling. Uh, Eric was captain of a freestyle team with a state team in Minnesota, in addition to having wrestled folk style in, in high school. And that's how he knew uh, Vern was through his his amateur wrestling prowess, and we just had Larry Zabisco on as our last guest, and Larry talked about uh, Eric very in, in very positive terms. He's a good friend of Eric's, and talked about how Eric was just given the stick, just given the mic yeah. in the uh, AWA, and boy did he uh, did he shine as a broadcaster, and uh, that's what led him to to becoming um, the, the running WCW. So did you and Eric keep in touch? I mean, obviously you all were you were fighting together and competing in your 20s. Did you and Eric stay in touch during that time frame? Yeah, we've done some business together. You know, we've always been friends. And he's, he's an entrepreneur, a lot like I am. You know, he, he's a little bit, you know, uh, uh, he'll fly off the handles and he'll say, that's a great idea. Let's do it. That's Eric. I'm a little bit more calculative than that. But anyway, what happened to 
you know, this, this is something that would be interesting to the uh, you you fan base out there. That you know, those of you who who likes Eric Bischoff or who hates Eric Bischoff, you know, you can blame me for Eric Bischoff being a professional wrestler. And so, because what happened was I created this little game called the Ninja Star Wars. That's when Star Wars was big, and 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 I, I just you guys know what Ninja Stars are like. Um, the Jackie, you know, being in jail, and, you know, all, all the prisoners always making those. <laughs> weapons out there. Shanks, right? <laughs> yeah, shanks, right? So Ninja Star is a little, little full-bladed or all-sided, a little star that you you, you throw um, um, like knife. And um, what happened was I made one of those out of Velcro and it made a vest and a headband that made out of what Velcro would stick to. And And if you remember the laser tag game, so this was kind of like low tech laser tag. You know, we could throw at each other and the thing would stick and we created the storyline and, you know, capturing the flags to, you know, fighting each other. That's the game I created. And I went to Eric and I said, Eric, you know, check this out. He said, man, we gotta put this on TV. I said, you know, n n I have no idea how to market the stuff. And Eric did. And Eric said, we need to put this on television. So he says, I said, how are we going to do that? We have no money, let alone, you know, we can barely manufacture the deal. He says, no. He says, L let me work on it. And what he did was that Eric went to see AWA, the Vern Ghana, because they were creating, they were having those syndicated shows that they would sell to like ESPN and TBS. And what they would do is, instead of paying them, they would give them commercial time, air time. And so Eric went over there and showed them the game and says, hey, we want to we wanna go in partnership with you. You give us your national airtime and we'll split the money from the profit and, and we'll, you know, we'll fulfill the, the uh, uh, sale. And um, that's how Eric got his first way into the professional wrestling contact was through that. And because through that, uh, people at the AWA and Vern and said, you know, you're a good looking kid. You're in sales. I like how you talk. How'd you like to be our syndicated salesperson? That's how Eric got in professional wrestling. And how he got to be a, a, a announcer was another one of those things that, that uh, what an announcer was not available. I won't tell you why he wasn't available, but he wasn't available. They put a jacket on him, says, gave him a microphone, says, all right, go on to interview these guys. That's how Eric Bischoff got on. Yeah, on yeah, that's – yes, Sonny, that's actually the story that Larry uh, told, that Larry Zabisco told on the last show. Thank you for watching the Hannibal TV. Please like this video if you enjoyed it and click the subscribe button to not miss any of our latest shoot interviews, match videos, or news updates. Follow us on Twitter at the Hannibal TV for instant updates.